It is good to see everybody this evening. I think you all know who I am. And uh, if you're ready to bless, I'll tell you. And uh, I'm Pastor Jonathan Bay, Rushville Baptist Temple. And uh, we uh, sure do uh, appreciate Victorious Life Baptist Church here in Shelbyville. Appreciate Brother Hibner and his family. And it's sure good to see everybody out this evening. I'll tell you what I appreciate is seeing a couple of young men helping uh, lead in the services. Amen. That's a blessing. Thank you, Brother Booster, for uh, the piano playing, Brother Gary, for the song leading. That's a blessing. That thrills my heart to see uh, young folks getting involved uh, with serving the Lord. Amen. That's a blessing. So uh, you all keep up the good work. John chapter number 12 this evening. John chapter number 12. And I uh, uh, appreciate Brother Hibbert uh, if I heard right. I'm not here to stand for all that thing, but it sounded like he was going to take me on for support, so I appreciate that. <laughs> that was a blessing, amen. Amen. And uh, so that's exciting right there. And you all be my first supporter then, amen. That's a blessing. Amen. All right, John chapter number 12. I'm going to read the first 11 verses. I've been praying about what to preach tonight. I went to bed last night. Honestly, with something else on my mind. And uh, I woke up this morning with this message on my mind. And uh, I believe this is where the Lord would have us. And so John chapter number 12, verse number 1 through 11 is where we'll be tonight. John 12, 1 through 11. If you found your place, go ahead and please stand with me. In reference to the Word of the Lord, if you're willing, if you're able tonight. And uh, we'll read these verses together. The Bible says, Then Jesus, uh, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, who he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bared that what uh, was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone, against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we do ask you, Lord, to bless this service tonight. I'm thankful, Lord, to be, uh, Lord, amongst friends, amongst your people. Lord, we're thankful for the work you're doing here in Shelbyville. We pray that you bless it, Lord, in a mighty way. But, Father, we need you tonight. We're gathered here, Father, and we're hungry uh, to uh, be fed from the man of heaven. Lord, we're thirsty, Father, for a cool drink of water in the midst of our week, Father. So I pray, Lord, you give us something special tonight. Lord, give us a special touch. Lord, help us to uh, be in Your presence. Lord, to learn something from Your Word, Father, that it help us to be better Christians, Lord. But I pray most of all that You get glory in this service. Lord, You're certainly worthy, Lord, of all the praise and all the honor for everything that will be done here tonight, Lord. And if You get glory in this service, I'm sure we're going to get help. So, Lord, I pray You glorify Yourself tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated. Thank You so much for standing these few minutes. I want to preach a message tonight uh, that's going to be a little bit different. I want to uh, keep a close eye on that time. And uh, I'm going to uh, preach a message tonight asking the question, who's in the house? When we come up to this text of Scripture, we find uh, this uh, feast that has taken place, this time of, uh, of Jesus visiting with some of His uh, dear friends once again in Bethany. Uh, Bethany seemed to be a place of rest for our Lord, and, and uh, He would oftentimes uh, go there throughout Scripture. And uh, these characters that are mentioned in this text 
Uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus was always there to meet him. It seemed like he just had a, a good, he would get among friends if he could just make it to Bethany. Yes. And uh, Jesus was not always among friends in his earthly ministry. And so Bethany just seemed like to be a place that uh, uh, he could go to to uh, have a, a happy meal with some friends, some folks that loved him and, and appreciated him. And, and uh, so uh, here he is again in chapter number 12 amongst those friends. And there are several uh, characters in this uh, passage of scripture that we read, just these 11 verses, there are several characters or groups of people uh, in this text that we will talk about tonight. There's many applications, I believe, that can be made from this. We can uh, really look at ourselves and uh, we can probably see ourselves in the attributes of some of these people as we'll talk. Uh, we can also see uh, that uh, what is gathered together here in this place really uh, uh, can be a, a great application to what a whole lot of Baptist churches look like today as well. Amen. And uh, uh, talk to your preacher about it before I know he's shared it with you that we are uh, a, uh, members that are fitly joined together into this body of Christ. And we're uh, joined together in this. And so each of us maybe have a different part and a different job here, but all of us together, assembled together collectively, are able to make up of, of, uh, of the church, make up of, of the house of God that uh, the Lord is able to accomplish great things uh, uh, in our midst if we do well, if we're in our places. And uh, so there's many applications that can be made here, I believe, in this text of Scripture. And so I want to show you tonight six things, Lord willing, six different groups of people in this text that I believe we can draw from. And so I'm going to have to try to go through this quick because uh, Brother Hinder said half an hour, amen. And I'm going to try to get to you quick. We're going to scratch the surface and we'll have to move on. All right, but you follow along, listen fast, and I can preach fast, amen. John chapter number 12 and verse number 1. We'll see the first group of people. The Bible says, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Let me say the first group I see in this passage of Scripture are the miracles who were seated. The miracles who were seated. We have Lazarus here in chapter number 12. What is amazing about this text it's declared uh, here in our passage of Scripture. The Bible says in verse 9 about Lazarus, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, not that they came, uh, not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he raised from the dead. In just a chapter before in John, in chapter number 11, we see this miracle take place where Lazarus is raised from the dead. Uh, we're not going to read that entire text for time's sake, but let me read you a couple verses. Verse 43 and 44. The Bible says, When he thus had spoken, speaking of Jesus, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And when he, uh, uh, and he that was dead came forth, bound him and put with great clothes, and his uh, face was bound about him with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, Loose him and let him go. Amen. I like those uh, uh, that last statement here. Brother Hinder, he said to loose them, and then he turned them loose. Amen. That's what he did. Well, that's a blessing right there. Get them old great clothes off of them and turn them loose, he says. And what happens between chapter number 11 and chapter number 12? Uh, we're not given that in between time, but we can uh, uh, make some assumptions based on what's taking place in chapter number 12. Apparently, when Lazarus got turned loose, uh, he went around Bethany telling everybody what had happened because now everybody's gathered at the house uh, because Lazarus is there. This miracle is seated. Uh, he was dead yesterday, uh, but he's alive today. He was dead in chapter number 11, uh, but he's alive and in the house of chapter number 12, uh, seated with Jesus, uh, having himself a good old time. Uh, you say, preacher, what's the big deal about that? Well, if you read Ephesians chapter number 2, uh, that's a pretty big deal, amen, uh, because the Bible tells us just turn over there. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 2. Uh, we'll read a few verses tonight, amen. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, uh, and you have the wicked uh, who were dead in trespasses and sins, uh, wherein in time past, uh, in our chapter 11 of our life, uh, we walked according to the course of this world, uh, according to the prince of the power of the air, uh, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we 
We all had our conversation in time past and the lust of the flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. But God who is rich in mercy for His great love wherewith He loved us even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And my friend, that's exactly what's going on with Lazarus in this text. In chapter number 11, he's dead in the world. He's been dead for days. He's rotten. He's sick. In fact, Jesus gives a warning in John chapter number 11. They say, Lord, he stinketh. He's been dead for days. We don't want to roll that stone back. You don't want to enter into that tomb right now. He's been dead a long time. And my friend, ain't you glad? But time doesn't make a difference when the Lord begins to speak. And He says, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came forth. Amen. And no matter how long we might have traveled in a world of sin, dead in our trespasses and sins, according to the chorus of this world, according to the lust of our flesh, but when Jesus speaks and Jesus draws and we're able to hear that voice and we're born again, the Bible says we're quickened, we're made alive. And then Lazarus is taken, he's loosened, and then he's turned loose. And in chapter number 12, we find him seated with Christ. Amen. What a place to be. Ain't it glad, friend, that when you look around the house, there's some miracles who are seated. Amen. When I look around the house of God, preacher, the one thing that fills my soul maybe more than anything else is when I walk into a church and I hear the testimony of this one and I hear the testimony of that one and they say, preacher, you don't know what I was before. You don't know what I did. You don't know how God changed me. I just say, praise the Lord. Thank God that He's in the life-changing business. That those old things can be passed away and all things can become new. That you can be quickened, regenerated, amen, saved by the grace of God, made alive in Christ Jesus. When I look around the house of God and I see the testimony of those in the pews, I thank God that there's some miracles who are seated. Amen. amen. Not only is Lazarus, he's mentioned in this text in John chapter number 11. If we go back to Mark in chapter number 14, we would find over there verse number, uh, the first part of the chapter there, we find that this is uh, uh, the uh, uh, other side, the view of the disciple Mark as he was at this occasion. And Mark gets a little more specific about whose house they're at, preacher. He says they're in the house of, of Simon the leper. And so this takes place in a leper's house. You say, preacher, what's the big deal about that? Hey, listen, friend, lepers don't have houses. That's the big deal about it. Lepers ain't supposed to be gathering people into them. They're supposed to be rejected and to be cast out and to declare themselves unclean. They're not to have close contact and fellowship with others, let alone be assembled together in a house full of people. You say, what happens there? Well, if the only one thing could have happened is that Jesus Christ cleans the lepers spots. Amen. And ain't you glad that 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 9 is still in the book. Amen. Right. That when we confess our sins, He's paid one just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Ain't you glad, friend, that He can take somebody who is filthy, but who is a, a defiled by the sins of this world, and He can take that righteousness of ours that He declares is as filthy as filthy rags, the nasty rags of those lepers. And He says He's as filthy rags, but He can take those filthy rags, and He can cleanse those filthy rags, and make them into robes of righteousness, pure and white. Amen. Hey, listen. Oh, you have to talk about the book of Revelation. I like the book of Revelation. We get some white robes in the book of Revelation. Yes, They're pure and white. They're clean. Because they are the righteousness of Christ. Amen. And my friend, ain't you glad that he can take a leper and he can take Lazarus and he can put them in the house. Amen. I thank God when I look around the house and I see miracles who are seen. Right. Amen. But that's just verse number one. Yes, sir. we got to get moving. I could be there a long time because I like it. Oh, 
miracles being seen today. Man, that's the blessing right there. Let me tell you, not only are there miracles seated in verse number one, but in verse number two, we find Martha who is serving. Yes. The Bible says in supper, be, uh, 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 oh, I lost my page. There we go. There, there they made him a supper. I wonder what happened there. My uh, page blew over on me. Then they made him a supper. And Martha served. Amen. Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. So not only was Lazarus there, the miracles who were seen, but there is also Martha who served. My friend, we ought to be thankful, amen, for those in the church that are serving. I mentioned earlier that it's exciting, it's thrilling to me to see a couple young men serving in the church, preacher. I, I'm excited about that. Thank you, young men, for serving in the church. Listen to me. Don't ever take those things for granted. Uh, there needs to be servants in the house. Uh, uh, listen, it's a great thing to have everybody come over for a feast, preacher. And that's a blessing. That's wonderful. But if you're going to have a feast and you're going to have folks coming to the house, there better be some servants there working. And, uh, or there's going to be some great disappointment uh, when everybody shows up uh, and the chicken ain't fried, praise God. Uh, they're going to be pointing the fingers at somebody and say, well, didn't you uh, uh, sign up for this? Shouldn't you have done this? Uh, it was your turn this week. Uh, no, it was your turn. Oh, there's going to be division. Uh, and there's going to be problems there. Uh, but I pray that there's some servants involved uh, that will just step up to the plate, uh, take on a little bit of responsibility and say, preacher, uh, I'll be glad to do that uh, for the Lord's sake uh, and for the sake of those in the house. Uh, I'll step up to the plate uh, and I'll make sure supper's cooked. Amen. That's what Martha did. Uh, Martha did what she could. Uh, Martha wasn't a preacher, certainly. Uh, uh, Martha certainly uh, uh, maybe was not the uh, uh, most talented in the house. Uh, she certainly wasn't the spotlight of the chapter. Uh, the chapter really uh, uh, spotlights the Lord uh, and spotlights Lazarus in these text of verses. Uh, Martha's just mentioned in passing uh, uh, that she was there serving uh, a supper in this text, but thank God supper was served, amen, because Martha had a little bit of gumption about her. She wasn't afraid to work, uh, wasn't afraid to use a little elbow grease, uh, to put in some labor, put in some hours, uh, uh, some sweat uh, to make sure that everything was prepared uh, and everything was ready to go. Uh, uh, so listen to me tonight, just as much as we uh, get excited uh, about the miracle who are seated in the pews. Oh, my friend, oh, we ought to be excited uh, for the Marthas of the church uh, that are willing to serve, uh, that are willing to put in the hours, uh, that a volunteer say, Preacher, uh, uh, how can I help? Uh, oh, what can I do? Uh, uh, how can I ease your burden? Uh, uh, how can I help uh, uh, the house of God to be successful? Uh, I promise you, uh, the, one of the greatest statements uh, uh, your preacher will ever hear uh, is, Preacher, uh, how can I help because when you go and ask the preacher how you can help, you know what happens? That list comes out and it rolls like a scroll right down the center aisle and runs out the front door because this list, I promise you, is a mile long. And if somebody's going to come by and ease the burden off the preacher and help serve in the house, bless God, that's a wonderful thing. Amen. Hey, you might not get a whole lot of uh, names and the signs and, and recognition. It might just be a verse in past. Just half a verse, really. Yeah. I mean, it's just barely even mentioned. If, if you blink, you're going to miss it. Right. But Martha was there. Supper was served. Because Martha got busy. Hey. Amen. You say, preacher, are the servants important? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We need servants in the house. We need servants in the house. Martha, who was serving, let's move on. Uh, verse number 3, we find Mary who was sacrificing. The Bible says, uh, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. There's a couple things here that I think is important. First of all, this a spike nerve, this ointment was very costly. The Bible says here, if you go read other texts of, of Scripture, you find that alabaster box, you find those things, and you uh, uh, get to studying about that. And if I understand correctly, which is about a year's worth of pay uh, to afford one of these. Uh, and this is an interesting thing because uh, uh, this was uh, uh, something that is used to anoint someone for the burial. It's an help prepare them. And in chapter number 11, Lazarus was dead. Lazarus was in a tomb. Lazarus was buried and Lazarus was taken. And she could have wrote the alabaster box for Lazarus, but she did not do that. And 
they actually chose not to uh, because she was saving this for a special purpose uh, because she knew that the day was coming uh, where chapter number 12 was going to arrive uh, and she was going to be at the feet of Jesus uh, and she was going to be able to anoint the Son of God uh, uh, for His burial uh, as He came to sacrifice Himself uh, as the darling Lamb, sinless and spotless, uh, uh, to take upon Himself the sins of the world uh, and as He's laid in that tomb He's laid in that tomb anointed uh, uh, with this alabaster box, this ointment of spikenard, uh, the sacrifice of Mary. Uh, but she breaks that box. Uh, she pours it on his feet. She begins to wipe his feet uh, uh, with her hair. Uh, uh, other text tells us she was weeping, uh, her tears mingling uh, uh, with this ointment. Uh, you know what happens uh, uh, to Mary in this scenario? Uh, uh, not only is she anointing the feet of Christ, uh, but some of that anointing inevitably is rolling off on Mary. Amen. Because Mary now is walking around and as she leaves the feet of Jesus later that day, that smell is carried with her as she can reach over her. Get a big old smell. Oh yes. Remember when we anointed Christ. Remember when we were worshiping the Lord and we were down at His feet. You remember that? Oh yes. And that smell is familiar. And it lingered. Oh, and it was a powerful smell. You see, not only did this a sacrifice, a honor, and anoint Christ for His bearing, but this smell, this air, and this text, look what it says. It says the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. So not only did this affect Christ and His anointing, not only did it rub off on Mary, but it began to affect everybody in the house. Listen to me, friend. The sacrifices that happen in the house are a contagious thing. It is something that you can find blessing in. It is something that pleases the Lord. And it is something that will benefit everybody that's there. You see this anointing. The Bible said, build a house. And so everybody in the house is able to smell it. I want to show you something here that the Lord showed me. Uh, look at this text of Scripture. Verse number 2, Martha made up. Verse number 3, we have the odor of the sacrifice. Let me say that the odor of worship filled the house. And this odor of sacrifice is greater than the odor of supper. Wow. Listen now, chicken's from. Martha's busy. The smell is coming up. Uh, and you ever, you ever been there, preacher? You're getting up to preach and the smell's coming up from the kitchen and everybody can smell the smell. They start grounding just a little bit. Uh, uh, but then somebody maybe shares a testimony, uh, uh, shares a song that was laid on a part. The preacher opens up the book uh, and the Bible just something that uh, uh, changes in heaven. Falls, and it seems like God moves in the place. And the last thing that's on everybody's mind is the chicken. Amen. All they can focus on is the smell that's filled the house. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that every house needs some Marys. Why we need Martha's. Why we need miracles who are seated. Every house needs some Marys that's willing to sacrifice. That's willing to pour out on their altar. That's willing to worship at the feet of Jesus, uh, that the whole house could benefit. Uh, you say, preacher, uh, is it really that contagious? Oh, I promise you, preacher. Uh, oh, you just see it just erupt. Uh, it might just start with one excitement over here. Uh, uh, maybe someone sharing a testimony. Uh, uh, someone shouting an amen. Uh, somebody maybe just uh, uh, breaking ranks a little bit and going and praying a little bit early. Uh, uh, somebody just moving uh, with that sweet spirit about them. Uh, and it don't take long. It just floods the church. Uh, and it seems like everybody's jumping on board. Listen to me, friend. I've seen many of people kill a church service, but I've seen many of people like Mary just pine some time to get the feet of Jesus and that smell begins to fill the air and it just overpowers everything. Right. You say, preacher, I ain't never seen a service like that. Well, we need some Mary's. Yeah, yeah. Listen to me, if you're in the house of God and your main focus is just what are you having for supper when you leave the place? How long am I staying here? How quick can I get to the drive through Listen, God, help us. We need some Marys that get at the feet of Jesus and let's let a lay out right there. Just stay close to Him. When Moses got close, he had a glow. When Mary was at His feet, she was able to anoint Him and that brother. Listen, you wanted to anointed service. Uh, be like 
Mary, get at his feet, sacrifice something for the Lord, get his attention, and watch what God will do. Amen. Yeah, amen. It takes sacrifice. Sometimes expensive ones. Sometimes expensive ones. This was very costly. It was a year's worth of wages. We find out that some didn't even agree here in just a minute. We find out some don't even agree that she broke this alabaster box and did all this for the Lord. Listen, sometimes it's going to take sacrifice. Sometimes we do have to open up our bill phones. Sometimes we do have to uh, make that extra uh, uh, free will offering of even above our tithes. Yes. Yeah. To help the Lord. The Lord loves a cheerful gift. Right. Oh, yeah. Sometimes that sacrifice needs to be made. We see in the text, I gotta move on. We see in the text of scripture miracles who were seated. Martha who was serving. We see Mary who was sacrificing. Lord, let me show you the men who were scoffed. Wow. In the text of scripture here, verse number four down to verse number eight, we see uh, what's the, being dealt with here. The Bible says, Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. What was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had he had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, Let her alone against the day of my bearing, as she kept this for the poor always ye have with you. But me, ye have not always. And so we see here the men who are stopping. Let me say, first of all, we see the betraying friend. Judas Iscariot is the one, of course, we all know, uh, famous for that betrayal. He turns and cries for just a few pieces of silver uh, and uh, betrays the Lord with a kiss there in the garden. Uh, Christ said, friend, uh, what for hast thou come? And he betrays him. We always uh, uh, just uh, uh, point him out. He's a betrayer. Uh, we all got a little bit of resentment built up yeah. towards him this, uh, uh, because he betrayed our Lord and betrayed our Savior. Uh, but here he is in the text. He's in the house uh, uh, with everybody else and he's scoffing. Uh, he doesn't understand. Uh, he says a mistake was made. Uh, we should have took this money uh, and we should have given it to the poor. Uh, we should have took the money and we should have invested it here. Uh, we should have built bigger barns. Uh, we should have done something else wow. with it. Uh, yeah. Hey, listen, friend, that's not what Jesus is about, amen. He's not about always bigger and better and bigger bank accounts and more money in the bag. He sometimes is about the giving end of it, amen. He said, use it. There's a purpose for it. And Mary right. had a purpose for her sacrifice. It was an anointed price for his burying. But look at Judas. He says that could have been given to the poor. That could have been put in the bag. We know it's because he was a thief. Uh, uh, Jesus goes as far to let us know that here in the text. But he is scoffing at the right. sacrifice of yeah. Mary. Listen, friend, there's going to be people that ain't always going to agree with you. There's going to be people that have pointed at you and say you're doing it all wrong. Uh, there's going to be people that say, why would you be so hard on yourself? Uh, why would you make that sacrifice? Uh, why would you spend all those hours serving? Why would you be there at the house of God? You're saying ain't that good enough uh, to have a relationship with the Lord? Hey, listen, friend. Uh, when the scoffers get to scoffing, uh, you just keep serving. You just keep sacrificing. You just keep sitting. Uh, you do what you're supposed to do uh, by the grace of God. Uh, don't let one scoffer, uh, one betrayed friend, uh, stop you from doing what's right. It did not hinder Mary from her sacrifice. It did not stop Mary or Martha from her serving. And it did not stop Lazarus from sitting at the table. Right. There was the betraying friend. We also find verse number 11 that there's the bitter Pharisees. In verse number 10, the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. If you go to Mark 14, you find that the Pharisees, the chief priests, are looking to put Jesus to death, but they find out Lazarus is here too. But he says, let's just kill them all. Let's just get rid of them. They're a problem. They're not doing things right. They're not a traditional. They are not a, a the way things ought to be. Society is disagreeing with what's going on in the house. And they said, let's just silence them. Let's eliminate them. Let's shut them down. That could have been the end of it right there, preacher. That could have been the end of it. Oh, well, we got stopped. We've got to stop. 
We got some posts that are putting up resistance. So we better quit while we're ahead. But I didn't stop anything. I 